I didn't know stages came with automatic waiting one. music. Round one. Capture. Me neither until the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I always had it muted on my other computer. So there's a stream wave point for everyone. I see it fine from my end. Uh, okay. Hopefully everyone else can see as well. You can send a re request to speak if there's some issue or if you have questions that come up during the talk. Yeah, both of us will be looking at stage chat. So you can ask any questions you have there. Mm -hmm. This is a water view of the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> kind of real. Yeah. This is a water view of the grand finals of the NAOWCS. Uh, Team on the left is uh, Toronto Defiant. A lot of these players won the Overwatch League last season. While on the right you have Timeless, on the right team you have Timeless, who are who have mostly been consistent NA tier 2 talent. And even though this was a 4 all, these teams went 3 and 2 with a very close loss for Timeless. Uh, just a few days ago, I mean, in the upper bracket finals. So this isn't a stomp or anything like that. So with Nepal Sanctum, you'll usually see teams set up in about two different philosophy points and this is always based on where you're positioning your hit scan so for example you can see that the Toronto Defiant has their um, sojourn split apart from their tank which gives them more leverage over that top high ground so Icy can't really push in here at all but then Chopper on the other hand is positioned on his ramp which gives them a little less total map control over that main high ground area but it actually gives them a little more leverage over point so this is actually going to make it a lot harder for blue team to be tapping the point like red is because their sojourn is on a slightly more ambitious angle for being able to contest it. So everything has their uh, costs and benefits here. Yeah, and as you can see, like to a lot of this, uh, blue Lucio has been locked to his tracer to avoid uh, any sort of mishaps where tracer just dies and you have to give up point, right? And because of that, someone also can't really contest this lane with Chopper, CJ, and IC on it, as well as he'd maybe like to. One thing to highlight, of course, too, that's a little difficult to see from the overhead, though, is Chopper actually does have rail and had rail considerably before Merit. So Merit has been playing relatively safe because Chopper has had rail and been holding it for a while. It's easier to farm it off the Sigma, who's doing the more aggressive poke, than IC, who is kind of just hunkered down behind a wall the whole time. Yeah. So yeah, you'll see the Tracer and Lucio from Red Team both juggling the point progress to try and get that first cap and avoid the poke damage as much as possible. And now that they have cap, they don't necessarily just need to kill or play for anything, they just want to burn time and not give up too much map control while doing that. But to want to define here, go for something very ambitious to save the point. Which doesn't really work out. So the interesting thing about this play here though, is if you go back briefly, what you notice is the way that someone drops back to contest the point. That's partially because um, neither of the squishies are really in a situation where they're feeling comfortable touching the point due to the pressure from Chopper and the rest of the poke damage. So if they don't put any point pressure on, this is going to be a pretty long and prolo uh, 
pretty long and gruesome fight. So that by having someone tap the point, what they know is if you pause here, is Icy gets free access to the bottom left side of the map, but Toronto Defiant realizes this and pulls back. And this is a really key principle of map control and the way that map control makes or breaks fights. Because if De Toronto Defiant left someone on the point here, they would instantly have a Ram and Curie in their backline and he would be cut off and run over. But because Toronto Defiant realizes this, they actually recognize and pull back their team so that they're staying on the outside edge of the fight. And in turn, they actually end up turning uh, the tables on Icy here in a moment because Icy ends up going deeper and actually ends up too far in the enemy territory himself because he was going for that aggressive map control on the edge of the fight. So if you go ahead and play, you'll see some interesting uh, maneuvers here from IC. Mm -hmm. Let me change windows for a second so I can give you a preview with Epic Pen. Yeah, so this should work now. And if I play here, both kills burn their ultimate, but I see already taken a lot of damage, so he can They just lose the fight of it. Then from here, uh, it's mostly just clean up since Toronto Defiant, you know, has their full resources. Well. Um, Timeless doesn't really have any ability to absorb the pressure, so Merit's able to pretty much just run it down. Uh, An open there does something. <laughs> he does get pretty uh, creative here. Yeah. Bait Dojo can't really eat that. that. One of Can the you? Sickest rocks if it. Hit. Yeah. Now since it's a four v five, Timeless go very quickly, and. They have more resources on points, so they can just win quickly. There we see kind of a pretty similar mirror situation to how it was in the initial first fight. Yeah. And note, someone is considering going for around the same play, but he decides against it. This ends Probably now. because of the old fight situation, Boom. and because they can swing the OC wide onto point. Unfortunately, this ends up being pretty resource intensive, which is fine, but only, of course, if it works out. And we don't see that bite coming through from Toronto to find that we would want. The flux was whiffed, unfortunately, as it happens. And they're not really able to get as much leverage with their sojourn onto the enemy backline as they would like. And their tracer is kind of being zoned out too because Rocket is marking the map control pretty effectively to prevent Sugar Fruit from getting free access. Yeah, and the skill on someone just means he has to swap to get there in time. Which means the comps, not what they want to be playing. Well, it's still a good comp, just they didn't prefer playing it, but they would have rolled out on it. And at this point, notice because Toronto Defiant has to contest here, now. Chopper pretty much has full look of the map yeah. while they're putting as much pressure on him as they can. There's no one who's really able to contest them. I believe someone will try here, which is the correct play to try and force him out because Defiant literally cannot win if he's uncontested. But as yeah. you can see, it's only a matter of time before they're kind of crushed because Blue has that constant pressure of needing to touch the point that red just does not have in this situation. So Timeless do manage to clean this up and bring the fight into their favor. Yeah, however, um, second point, you'll see the starter shift. Go back like five seconds. Really. And you see how uh, Topper and his team can just kill Merit pretty much for free since uh, he's desynced from. I mean, not desynced per se. It's more so that 
Red team can, has more control over their Saigon and they can all just run onto their Merit standing a lot easier than someone can join that fight and Sugar Quick can join that fight. So it ends up being a 4v3 that favors Chimeless. that initial advantage they can point so a lot of teams would be pretty worried about playing this split people tend to think that's group that they want to hit the group up because if you notice the lucian sojourn up here top and it's a lot more difficult to coordinate effectively when you're far split away like that. Especially if the enemy team is able to run down one of the units before uh, they can capitalize. It could cause problems, but in this case, it's going to be very hard for red team to pursue either unit because they all have really high mobility. And they have the coordination to benefit from the sheer map control that it gives them because it's going to be much harder to avoid the damage from either of those units and contain both of those doors at once. Yeah. And now that uh, Toronto has map control over point, pretty soon you're gonna start seeing someone and his, his tracer surge go pretty hard on chopper. And see what that does very soon. Yeah, so here the important things to notice are you have attention starting to go towards the Kiri and Doom on the flank, which takes attention off of Merit, who's also on the high ground and very difficult for the main team to pursue. So Merit actually has tons and tons of space here, and it makes it way easier for him to land that shot on Chopper and just in general be doing more fights uh, contributions. So effective positioning to draw attention away from teammates and timing with them, it actually makes just even base level mechanical execution much easier. And that's why players like Merit look really, really good mechanically. Uh, first of all, because they are. They're known to be a, a goldfish with aimbot, so to speak. But even more so because he has someone like Someone and Sugar Free and RuPaul on his team. All of them who are able to draw attention and open up space for Merit. This I am recording now. this, yes. I am also recording this. this. But in with this fight, you can see Red Soldier has an easier time landing their shot. Let's look at their POVs here. May have skipped back like two extra seconds, but this that's fine. Now. Nobody's really shooting Merit. Merit's kind of just chilling there, playing callbacks on his angles while... Let's look at what Chopper is doing. This ends now. Chopper's dealing with Doom Boots, Doom Slam. And his dude's flying out. Plus he also has the tracer down on his bottom left, and while he didn't look over at them, I guarantee you that he has some attention being put towards uh, them. They were there earlier. Yep. And he just has so much more to worry about, so many uh, things to think about while all, Cho all Merit really has to do is stand there and shoot, you know? And by the same note, ironically, Merit, the only person he really has to be worried about on the other team is Chopper because Rocket and the rest of his team don't really have good access points onto that pretty secure high ground position. So by having his team playing close to disable Chopper from multiple angles, you actually see Merit being enabled in turn, which further exaggerates the difference in what they're able to do this fight. Chopper is yeah. like, you know, fighting for his life out here while getting jumped in a dark alleyway, while Merit's, you know, sitting on his lazy boy recliner 
popping shots and looking clean. No, I see goes over to the queen. Doesn't really change too much in terms of how they'll be playing this composition. So it's gonna be a standard brawl with more explosive power. Yeah, realistically they probably did it because they felt like it would give them a little bit more burst team survivability against the initial dive engage. I'm actually not a big fan of it though, because I don't think JQ really helps that much in containing the dive. I think it would have been an absolute Hail Mary play for that to work. Yeah. Um, considering that her strength over here is like Ram usually is that mobility and, so to speak, ability to dive in a way. But there's not really anyone diveable on Toronto Defiant. So she ends up in a kind of awkward situation. You'd really have to be playing for getting kills on knifed targets or um, more likely cast nades, which puts just a lot of really awkward pressure on the team. I really like this uh, first fight of this map. Yeah, you can see how they've both taken a different side of the point and just play yeah. both from it. If you pause here, something that's really good to highlight here, so a lot of teams will actually just roll out default main up the stairs and then send someone out on a flank onto Elephant. But I actually personally prefer having teams head towards the inner side of the map, kind of where Toronto Defiant is. Because if mm -hmm. you look at the point entrances, um, the entrance to the point from Elephant is just this pretty narrow doorway. And it doesn't actually give you that much angle variation all from this one side. Well, if you go to the other side, you just have this massive you know, open area with the two pillars. So you can actually all play relatively stacked and a little closer while having more relevant angles over the point control. Normally for Elephant to be a relevant uh, angle, you need other people on the stairs, but the stairs just aren't that comfortable except for if you're a flanker and they're a little more split from uh, from their core because of that uh, wall kind of near Elephant that's uh, on the corner where there's a little less wall on the other side. So in general, Merit is going to be feeling a little bit more ability to put out pressure because his team took the more open side of the map and Sugar Free has been able to get pretty early set up on the stairs too because uh he's a little less split and can play there a little bit more than rocket can and you can see this pretty clearly where merit's just playing his uh, normal angle where he started while chopper had to leave this angle to go over to this much tighter angle and just to be able to poke without taking much damage back without being at risk of dying the other really underrated thing is um, rolling out on the inner side of the map, especially if you're mm -hmm. playing with Sojourn comps, This is and Kiri as well to an extent. Because you have the high grounds on that side, you actually have way more ability to get away from less mobile compositions and essentially just you know farm from that high ground if they tried to force an engage onto you. Meanwhile, if uh, Defiant tried to force an engage onto red, um, Chopper might find himself a lot more vulnerable because he doesn't have quite as defensive of a position to move to. So right here around is when you see some pretty interesting things happening because this is where you see the map control start to really put heat on the players on uh, Timeless. Yeah. Because now you have Merit playing up pretty aggressively. Sugar Free is on the stairs, so if Icy plays up, or really anyone plays up like Icy is right now, they're going to be getting chunked from both Tracer and the front and this way they can't really effectively pressure out or deal with or even just gauge the threat level of all of these people at once. They physically cannot cover from all of these people. Rocket is trying to absolve this as much as possible with an aggressive play from the flanks but because blue is relatively secure pretty much everyone on timeless is still in front of them and they're still feeling pretty confident here. Yeah, and this is pretty much just a choke, like, you, like you'd see on King So at this point. Yeah, and They're... notably, in a moment, you'll actually see Chopper having to deal with Doom and um, Tracer a little more, I believe. Okay. And it makes him kind of more uncomfortable, too. 
So you, you see some pressure from uh, yeah. Sugar Free onto him, and it forces him out while Mera is still able to play this more open space and press it. That just Never gives here, so easy much player. easier uh, conversion. I do like the Risa pick though better than the Ram or JQ into this matchup. I think she's a little bit more independently survivable, which gives the backline a little more leeway to handle situations. Yeah. And that's... That was, hmm? that was clean for Merit. Yeah. It's, I believe CJ just jumped there uh, in a straight line and that just caused it. Why do you think they keep going for this cast of the surge? What do you mean, like get off surge into cast? So, if I had to guess, obviously I don't know um, perfectly, you know, the mentality of the players. Chopper is very talented on both heroes, but Mira is one of the best sojourns in the world. So arguably, you could say that he doesn't necessarily want to take the, you know, the ego duel, so to speak. He's picking cast specifically because that's stronger in the dive mirror, and they're probably worried about trying to check someone and contain him. But honestly, I think it's a little awkward. I, honestly, the biggest reason is because if you're not playing Sojourn on more, you know, aggressive angles and really taking advantage of her ability to escape and like get those quick burst damage, like uh, Chopper often is forced to in these situations, the Cassidy will often feel better because he's a little bit more resilient against those dives if you don't have an escape because he has the role and a little bit more, uh, you know, HP and can just stack on people a little more. Um, yeah. A little bit more and of that close range damage. So it's, he's a little more straightforward to play, is what I would say. One more thing Soulge, uh can do, which click on is follow up on engagements with slide when it's safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is more important when you're playing with a Doom comp than you're playing with than when you're playing it with an Oisa comp or a similar Brawl comp, right? Yeah. Which makes three a much better pick on red time side than blue teams. Yeah, essentially if you are going cast, it's makes more sense for Timeless to be considering it because they're not really playing for mobility plays as much anyways. So they're kind of just, uh, their style is kind of, you know, poke, wait it out, try and see to maintain map control as best as possible and see what you can make out of it. But it's not really working since uh, Defiant has really been holding the reins of these fights with setting up Vega and Sugar Free on places where they can suppress Rocket and then yeah. giving Merit free access to work on what someone opens up. And so, and I think you might have missed here is that Sugar Free and Vega both like cleared this a lot because uh, this is when if Tracer wants to like flank around and get your elephant, this is when she's gonna do it. She obviously doesn't choose to here, but they're just looking out for it. Is Rocket, uh, okay, he's doubling back in main. Yeah, so, so you'll see him playing for an off angle again here to try and make things work, which is, you know, nice, and that's a hallmark of a good Tracer player. Rocket is probably the most talented Tracer player that we've seen in NA contenders for quite some time. So he's, he's definitely someone to keep an eye on with Tracer. And a lot of his decisions have been very strong and justified in this matchup. I would even say a lot of times he looked stronger than Sugar Free in this specific matchup, just couldn't really integrate it necessarily correctly with the team. Yeah. This is going to be really tough, though. Like, this is almost an unreasonably difficult situation for Red, though, because if they're rolling everyone off of the high ground, it's you look at Merit and you wonder, well, gee, you know, how are they possibly going to get any pressure on Merit? And that's why it's a little bit doomed to failure here. Yeah. I think I may be, I maybe would have preferred 
The problem is they can't go underneath though either because they do need to clear that high ground because if they went underneath through the mega room and they had, you know, sugar free waiting on the high ground with a pulse bomb or something, uh, that could go really badly. So maybe what I would have liked to see is a quick push out to clear this high ground and then dropping into the stairs underneath. But, you know, it's hard to say how that would have turned out. It's difficult since everything on this map can turn into a kill box. Like this whole area when you're walking out can get hit from here, here, from up here even. There's a lot of oh, yeah. angles you have to worry about. Same with like, uh... If you look... If you look at walking out here, you also have to worry about a lot of angles here. Yeah, like some point that's... from both sides, etc. And on high ground as well, you have this point angle to worry about and a short lane they can jump cooldowns into. So, it's difficult for timeless. That's why I think I would have liked to see underneath, because I think that has their most cover on the approach to point for if they want to close the distance on mirror. I think what I actually would have liked to see is a rotation from Arisa, um, probably Lucio and Kiri all on underneath, and then Tracer solo up top to clear that. Maybe you could have also done cast Lucio on top and then the others on bottom, but that's a little dicier because mm -hmm. it's possible that they could have just rushed top. But that way you probably get the best of both worlds of having Tracer able to mark top a little bit and then getting your cast closer to the point to actually be able to contest the sojourn without, you know, getting his head blown off. But this to me just looks like it's doomed for failure. This is your warning. This ends they now. Really Suzu. Yeah, and again, Merit <laughs> can just sit there and shoot them. He doesn't have to worry about anything. If you look at his POV, you can clearly see it. Let's go back here. He's just shooting into a clump and getting free damage. Tags. Yeah, and this is where you really see that once again, where having strong map control and suppressing the opponents gives so much space for your teammates to do work because they just don't have as much pressure on them. It's just all in front of them easy to play secure and then easy to press up with confidence when the engage happens. Yeah, and now uh, blue team just have better ult, so it's really hard to make anything of it for a time less. Yeah, and at this point also, because Red doesn't have time to set anything up, we actually kind of see them in the same situation that Defiant was in the first stage of the map, mm -hmm. where they just don't have time to actually set up the angles to contest, and Blue can actually just give up the point entirely if they want. So, yeah. that's always a brutal situation to end up in. And let me pull up the other code. Any super quick questions as we pull up the next code? People have been able to feel like they've been following along. Honestly, Prozac, it's a little hard to say. I would personally say that the way that they juggled the point at the start of the map was honestly just a little bit better. I don't, I don't obviously have all the perfect solutions that. because that honestly takes hours of, you know, studying and considering the possibilities to find. I think if maybe someone had been a little bit more passive on that initial poke so that it was a little harder to get uh, rail for chopper and if they rolled merit out onto Sorry. coast side first before then sliding him uh, over to his other position where he played most of the fight i think that maybe would have been a little bit better because the and the reason i'm focusing so much on the first fight is on a point like that it's so hard to flip the point so you saw you know timeless just get massive chunks of point progress because it just took so long to flip things back and i think that's really what bit 
uh, defiant is they just didn't have enough time in the end to you know pull things together, and they were just constantly fighting against a cap point against them. Yeah. Um, as for your question, Weevil, I think it does depend on the situation. With Soge, usually you're going to play, regardless of comp in a cycle, where you play back a little bit more at the start and kind of more near the team. And then you take like a soft angle just to, you know, see where you can get some charge here and there. And then once you have rail, then you want to play a little more out wide to the sides or further up, especially if your team is starting to push. And then that's, once you have rail, that's when you hit that, you know, pressure spike. And then hopefully at that point, you either can get a pick or critical enough pressure for the opponent to be on the back foot as your team pushes them. And then you can kind of just continue to play up with your team. So you'll see really passive play from Sojourns at the start but then really aggro as soon as they have rail up. If that answers your uh, question. Yeah, you have to worry about assault a lot more when they're glowing blue, so you'd rather <laughs> harness that time uh, and not just lose your resources when you don't have that threat, you know? Yeah, because if you take an angle too early, uh, you're not actually that threatening, so a lot of the times people just can ignore you or honestly more likely just force you out before... Uh... Like they can just spam you out before you can farm up the rail. Yeah. So here we actually see a pretty much a repeat of that matchup, which is pretty fun since this is a this is an interesting compositional matchup. Yeah. And timeless actually, I liked how they played this map a lot on the whole. And honestly, I think by rights they maybe should have won it, but it was definitely back and forth. So here you see a pretty normal to the two philosophies. So if you pause here for a second, just like how on Sanctum, we saw the two philosophies of kind of have the Soge close to your team for controlling point versus have the Soge across for controlling the you know areas around the point. On Esperanza, you usually see teams take two philosophies of either um, play to control the area by the castle um, which includes your high ground plus the kind of area around the point. So sugar free is kind of the outer edge of that on their flank, while main is kind of pointed straight from merit down to someone. That's kind of like the spine of this team, so to speak. Meanwhile, red is taking the other philosophy, which is to take the wide rotation around towards point. And the advantage here is, while you don't, you know, get the easy high ground stuff and all of that, it's actually pretty hard to approach this area because you have pretty long um, open sight lines. So for example, Sugar Free can't really approach Chopper or CJ that easily. And um, it's not like, you know, a super free engage because there's all this open space and relatively good cover as well. But you also have weaker angle options. So you, the only angle option really for Red is to have Rocket battling out Sugar Free. But even if he wins that, he can't really engage on that high ground because it's uh, because Blue has, you know, that strong bridge control. So Rocket is actually mostly just playing to block sugar free and contain him so that uh, chopper can do work on the front line and red's win con here is basically just to slowly inch the point forwards yeah and while sugar free is fighting this uh tracer duel with rocket rocket's just playing to like stop the bleeding stop sugar free from killing everything while sugar free doesn't really have to worry about this since what's tracer gonna do after he's forced out like walk up here in clear view of Swords Tracer and be fine, yeah. you know? But by the same note, Sugar Free does want to open up that angle to, to win for himself, because otherwise he can't approach yeah. from anywhere, really, until they start getting really close. So he would like to avoid that if possible and, you know, see what he can do. But yeah, Tracers are kind of going to be at stands, uh, standstill. But of course, whoever wins that... Uh, could have massive ramifications on the rest of the fight. Yeah, see, and... So, right here, we see something happen in that regard. Yeah, Sugar Free wins the Tracer deal. And now, Timeless is kind of on the back foot here. Do you see how Chopper's been pressured by Sugar Free and he has to play back and chill to avoid just dying? And while that's going on, Riker is trying to engage. And this split just means that Merit just doesn't die. Even when he ha he gets Orisa's spear. 
And I believe Rocket died because of he got he he landed in some he like a disruptor shot yeah. in a Doom Slam or something. Right. He blinked up here, tried to take the space and had to recall. Oh, so he got too greedy with the, yeah. the play and tried to force through the map control preemptively, yeah. And that's why that good map control that Defiant had set up, it's able to punish plays like that. So they, they you know, locked down Rocket, he didn't recognize it and respect it enough, and then ended up being punishable. No, like this on the Zarya. The Zarya plays relatively similarly to those other heroes that we've been seeing, but she has a lot more ability to enable that cast than the other tanks yeah. that we've been seeing, as well as you know peel off the dives and help them sustain without this... being, you know, pseudo-dive quite like Junker Queen. Mm -hmm. So she's a pretty nice pick for this matchup, I would say. This whole comp versus a dive comp just relies on letting their Creed carry core survive the dive, since they're the most susceptible to being dove. Yeah. And Zarya really helps with that, more so than something like Queen or... Um... So here what we'll probably see is a split unit going trying to go top while they also have rocket marking point. But this is a really nice play from someone to wrap around there with Sugar Free because they stay yeah. relatively on the outside of the fight. But then note that RuPaul and Vega actually have a pretty good off angle here and you can't underestimate the damage that those two can do. Yeah, and even during the setup for this, you can just see Merit uh, telling around here. Just shooting for free into them, and they can't really do anything about it, right? Would have been good to wait. You to engage in Kishin the dive. Hmm. Yeah, so Blue couldn't reasonably dive in the first fight unless Red, um, fumbles the positioning so what red would so what the timeless would have been doing is essentially positioning in intelligent ways so that if blue dove they would be feeding and then trying to slowly just pressure whoever is contesting point until the point is really close to the bridge and then they would maybe try to to do a play so yeah they would be playing like a long term thing blue wouldn't engage though because yeah. they're, they're good enough that they would recognize it to be a feed so they would either be looking to pick off Rocket so that they could open things up for the dive, uh, since he kind of contains the outer edge of it, or um, they would just be trying to slowly get that point forwards because they're not able to really, you know, aggress into blue either. So yeah. you're pretty close on the mark. That uh, analysis worked for like most levels of play, but at this level, you kind of just don't dive before you don't like hard commit with a dive before it's guaranteed. So you'll just see uh, Timeless lose a lot of resources before they can really do anything. I think maybe what I would like to see that fight is maybe see Zarya trying to wrap high ground instead, like a little more ambitiously while leaving cast marking, um, kind of on that little advertisement pull thing. Yeah. Because then, then maybe they would have had a little bit more guard, and Zarya should be able to turn around to get a bubble there without too much issue. And you could actually even send Tracer up the high ground too with the Zarya. Yeah, when you're playing this hallway, uh, you can just be locked in here if the enemies get control of this side yeah. of the map like this whole area and they already had two people here and they were wrapping up right yeah so they were guaranteed a loss because of how they were controlling the you map need, you need someone a little bit more able to to mark that and protect you know give you it's like chess when you have the you know one piece protecting another uh yeah. you know if they're, if they're getting an offing on one piece of your team Ideally, you have someone else on an angle that, you know, kind of guards against that and would in turn have an angle on them. Yeah, I didn't really like how they put Zarya on cards personally. 
since Teresa can just do that on her own, I assume it will still wrap around to the high ground. But that just leaves their back line too open. Yeah. Now you can see a repeat of that quite likely. Oh, never mind. This is a better looking split, but it's yeah. also a little awkward because Chopper still isn't going to be in a position from here where he gets much pressure on Merit. And that's kind of the key because unless Sugar Free or someone really mess up, uh, we're really looking for some level of backline pressure, ideally. Um, as yeah. it, this fight is currently breaking out, it's essentially going to be Riker and CJ trying to contain and pose enough threat to Defiant's backline that they just aren't looking at uh, you know, the rest of Timeless. And then Chopper, Opener, and Rocket are basically just going to try and pummel whoever's on the cart. Before we look at the top down for this, I want to show you uh, Merit's POV of like this initial. Yes. He's just kind of chilling, shooting a Zarya for free. He doesn't have to worry about Chopper or anything or really that can kill him, right? And it's just a good time for him. Yeah, that's actually brutal that Riker drops so early there. And yeah. there's probably a call to just focus Tracer Doom that he maybe took a little too literally and when that really isn't his job here. Or perhaps he was looking at the bubble. Who knows? I think the high ground just felt bad after bubbling once since yeah. at that point he just take too much damage to merit. Possibly. But the core issue here is that Riker is going for something aggressive while Chopper and Rocket can't really do much about it. Well, yeah. Cho Rocket's stuck contesting uh, the Tracer Doom on card. And Chopper just can't get an angle without getting punished for it. And realistically, um, Timeless now just can't contest merit at all like there's nowhere that uh he can go and yeah it's nice seeing vega bodyguarding him for the aggro play yep. so, yeah i think the oc was maybe a little bit early but they're able to use it to split apart and contain the rest of the team with the pressure and then just focused on riker which was nice use of it yeah That's just a cleanup, they're just looking for anything they can get. Notice how Toronto, instead of fighting them on cards, just give it all up to take control of this height back. They still have bot, don't get me wrong. They just aren't pushing it, they aren't like taking aggressive angles to fight Timeless with it. Teams love leveraging objective pressure here. It's kind of like what we talked about in Koth where... Push, obviously, it's really even more blatant. Uh, if you have 78 meters of progress and the enemy team has four, you can really just play to... Like, you don't ever have to play into them or even push the cart necessarily. You just have to play to contain them. So here, yeah, um, they'll probably keep sugar free marking in main. And if Timeless tries to rotate through the high ground, someone can meet them up top. Sugar free will be following behind them. And meanwhile, if they try and push cart, they have sugar free marking, or someone can play into it while Merit and RuPaul and Vega can all take the matchup up top. Notice so how all of these spots that uh, Timeless have to walk into can just turn into kill boxes where. There's like this angle, this angle. Yeah. Like, and this is a notoriously difficult choke to break. Yeah. While. Oh, give me a second. I would usually <laughs> recommend um, playing some unit of core going high ground while you leave Tracer to mark cart and just see what happens. You honestly could maybe even leave Lucio with Tracer, but that would be a little awkward here because they have beat and they really want that for their high ground top unit. Yeah. So I would maybe like to see actually, is Zarya, Lucio, Cass 
um, Kiri all going top. And then at the last second here, they would split Lucio Cast further out towards the uh, left side onto the other high ground while they send Zarya Kiri onto the direct high ground where Merit and friends are. They would basically, you know, amp speed cast around towards the high ground so that they have a little more angles to control this. Um, mm, the difficult thing, of course, is something. The difficult uh, thing is someone. Usually, you do it with a longer range hero than. Yeah, uh, that's cast. true. I just feel like Toronto Defiant could just uh, flip map off that. That's the problem. Yeah, and... they're going to be doubling down on Rocket, so I don't know if that would necessarily yeah. help. And that's and where then... you reach the, you know aspect of why this is so difficult yeah <laughs> Toronto defiant can always flip this at you know a moment's notice yeah that might have been interesting actually to see rocket rotating around that with Z oh yeah right so it would have been interesting then to see rocket instead doing what i said the cast could do and then having zarya kiri pushing top while you have cast lucio staying bottom that could actually be maybe pretty good yeah i'm a bit uh skeptical on the viability on a kui flank uh... here Sugar Free is playing bottom there just to kind of mark that choke. So if he's just looking to mark cart, and if nobody goes cart, then he's just going to follow behind them and have an off angle in the area with the mega pack in the middle. So he's yeah. basically just keeping them from pushing cart for free so that they have to sit there in uh, Merit's sight lines if they want to push. Yeah, when they try and fight Sugar Free, they're also in LOS of this core. Or they're just disconnected from their team which they'd not like this is sugar if we try and go for an off angle and make them focus on things with him while you answer that i'm just gonna play this yep. fight and as you can see they're just staying there with sugar free controlling card so they don't get Free capture, and now they have a four man per walk top. Yeah, so we do actually see that flip on yeah. the rocket here. And Toronto just dropped and tried to flip map. That's nice that uh, Toronto, that Timeless didn't hesitate at all to pursue. Yeah. That is nice that they caught Sugar Free. He got a little split. The, probably didn't quite manage his cooldowns as he would have liked. Yeah, and with uh, Sugar Free dying, they don't have as many options as they'd like. Yeah. And this is why most teams do try to play for that high ground, even if there is the chance of the flip. is because if you can just punch them back far enough to, you know, dislodge them from the bot, you can start pulling it back pretty easily. But you see a really nice flip again from uh, Timeless to retake this high ground, which is a pretty strong defensive position. But... Um, Timeless was pretty ready for them, and they were able to hit a pretty nice grab there yeah. to contain things. And now, Timeless's comp isn't as good as Toronto's at playing this height. Yeah. So, you might see them just give it up and play closer chokes and try and match the enemy. Yeah, they probably swap the, the Winston here, partially because someone is a counter swap merchant. and. Winston has a pretty strong matchup into Zarya. Yeah, and also, someone's a also a very talented Zarya. Yeah. Uh, Winston. Great Winston player, but also Winston's a little bit better in this high verticality engage onto this high ground yeah. than uh, a Doom. He's a little more survivable against the cast. I miss what the beat was for. I assume it's just a poorly timed beat engage. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what their. If they're beating for anything a little defensive. early. Yeah. These guys still had their cool up, so. Because there's no ults coming out from blue, and that's usually what you would do for it defensively. Yeah. But this is nice, though, that they split apart someone, because they should, if they recognize that, they could melt him pretty easily here. Yeah, they could get the someone kill here, but not sure if they do. He got close. Yeah, Rocket but... couldn't quite pursue yeah. tries, but that's still a good point progress though. Merit's gonna be pretty contained here. So what you're gonna see this ends is now. someone going in aggro with Merit going in, and that's what takes the attention off of Merit to make it 
a little bit more spacious because he can't if he just stayed in that window he wouldn't have been able to do anything at all obviously though they're still playing into really entrenched positioning from red so it's pretty likely that um you know timeless can just keep things moving just off of the sheer defensive nature of the the map and being hard to dislodge their comp from it yeah over time though it looks like the map control from uh, blue from that quick push through the archway that they did they were kind of able to surround timeless and that looked like it worked out in their favor in the long run and you can see they're they're in this trap again where they uh, they don't really have a good engage you know timeless don't have many good options yeah, this should be pretty close to just a repeat of uh, yeah. some of the previous fights. And they just get Winston and kill you out with tried to force Merit, that, yeah. Though. Or uh, Defiant tried to force that a little harder than they should have. A lot harder than they should have. Yeah. I think it still works out? No, it does not. Nah, yeah. Once uh, Winston blew up, they could pretty much just walk forwards with core, and they, so there just wasn't much able to contain uh, Chopper and Rocket and friends. They should have probably just maintained their advantage and played to to hold the outside area. So would you go Monkey or Zao in this situation while if there wasn't Zao? Uh... Like, would Red swap to one of those? Um, honestly, I don't think it matters too much. They both either... can do a very similar job. Yeah. When you're picking them as a main thing. I would recommend over uh, Winston, though, over D.Va, probably just by nature of D.Va having a lot less initiation power. So usually with D.Va, you want a very rear-wheel drive heavy comp, so to speak. So you'd want, like, a backline that outputs more pressure or, like, more spammy DPS, who, like, you know, have more pressure coming from themselves to make space and swing wide to force things out because diva doesn't have that so in red's comp they would almost certainly probably want the winston over a diva uh, if they didn't have the zari they, they want uh front wheel drive comps so to speak here because kiri lose to it doesn't output that much pressure when you do see diva and pill playing like the current state of the game when it's not with a backline that has extremely high pressure, like something like an Ana Kiri. Uh It's usually just because the player playing the D.Va is much better at D.Va than yeah. they are at Winston or Doom. Yeah. And it's just much. a matter of team comfort. And while uh, Toronto team is fighting on point, someone's going to do this, uh, partly because he has time over. He, even if he gets four, like, shot at, even if he gets discovered, he can just primal and he's fine, right? He can just dive down. If he didn't have that, he'd have to wrap around, and that would give uh, Timeless way too much time to go on their backline. Yeah. A good grab, and I should win this fight. Yeah, but here's where you start to see Timeless's um, bolt economy dry up. And while yeah. Defiant also has been matching that, I think it maybe disfavors Red a little bit because. It's extremely justified to burn like your alt advantage for getting lead on push. So. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if. Um... No, it's actually probably about equal in terms of the old economy. So yeah, this fine. is this is a concept you guys might want to apply. But around the time it's one thirty or two minutes, there's only gonna be two or three fights left. So that's yeah. like the last cooldown cycle of the game. And this is when you start alt tracking more uh, yeah. assiduously. And because here, realistically, next fight is just going to be Kiri ult for Defiant, 
which will yeah. take them to probably close to their side of the map again. Which will take them to around here, right? Yeah. And then after that, we should see Curie ult from red plus maybe also an OC and pulse bombs, which means last fight we'll probably see like Grav Primal again and beats. Yeah, and that's assuming nothing, no mechanical Hail Mary plays happen. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't a bad situation, of course, for uh, Timeless. That's a pretty reasonable. Yeah, I'd go as far as to say Timeless is pretty happy to be in that spot. Yeah. Especially, like, the here, there are a lot of this, is they're just playing to stall out these fights as much as possible and die cart. Yeah. There's a nice little angle from Chopper here. He unfortunately, doesn't quite manage to, you know, go to ape mode and just pick everything off, but it is pretty lethal. It does manage to find Vega, which, uh, Opener has a slight bolt charge advantage from that fight over him now. Yeah. And now what uh our team wanna do is to They don't wanna burn their arts uh before they can actually guarantee that they win the fight. Before they can guarantee that they can like just clean up and have the time bank to win to the point where yeah, because at this point there's anything. only one clean fight left. Yeah. Because there's only thirty seconds. So if they win this next fight. Blue is going to have to take one of those scrappy fights like we talked about on the Koth maps, and it would really disfavor them. Yeah. You'll probably see them wait a little bit to like maybe the 20 second mark before carry ulting. And get all their angles set up. You see Chopper and Opener doing the that's thing really we were nice. talking about? Yeah, that's a very good angle. Unfortunately, if uh, Timeless realize what's going on, they can just full send it. Yeah, so what I would like is if Chopper and Opener were a little bit more in the middle on the tower, so that Riker and CJ could just kite back underneath their bridge and then catch uh, Defiant in a crossfire if the if they try to play in aggressively. Yeah. But because they're playing so split, this actually might have some liability attached to it. Yeah, so they do kind of gather up here, but know that Defiant all just gets shoved into a locker into one spot which is really not what they had hoped for yeah um, and Riker gets uh, a bubble thrown on top of him while Kiri's stuck in her animation for alt yeah. and that just gets her killed yeah really yeah they probably just were just saying zar, 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 zar. yeah i think <laughs> here though i would have i feel like Riker should have had his bubbles and been able to recognize this pressure here yeah or just been a little tighter on the swing if i remember right he played a little too far up next to the tower away from his cover and yeah he tried was playing like all the much. way up yeah. here and that's where it bit him because he didn't have that clean kite back to like a secure position so it's just kind of an unfortunate small scale error and uh it then wrapped up the rest of timeless into mispositioned situations where they're no longer favored at this point, honestly, I would rather if they just blitz cart and try to keep it from moving as much as possible, because they will get one more fight here, but they they, they can't afford to stall this. Yeah, as long uh, as much as they stall, like, the more time they waste stalling here, the more time they have to set up before the fight that settles the map. Yeah, but by the same note, Blue is going to be getting up to critical ults if they make this take too long. So yeah. that's why you might want to just Hail Mary it. But either way, though, we'll have to see how they do it. The key is just to be, just to down cart and be sync. Yeah, if so anything. Chopper, Chopper is going on pretty nice angle. Yeah. And the, here, I think they call to just back up and try to not stagger. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of going for the dead eye oh. there, though, and like trying to actually play to win that. Because now, yeah. look. All of red is on the back foot now, right as Riker is like respawned and on his way back. And now we just don't have a good clean fight from red, which is why I would have rather just had a clean reset and now it'd be five seconds left probably about. Um, yeah, I'd rather it even have... It doesn't functionally change that we have one more fight after this. Yeah, I'd rather even have uh, Kree just rush on the point to like see if he can get like his aim to carry him into a, like a kill or two, right? 
Which is very unlikely, but it's better than being dead when this fight's happening. Yeah, so let's take a look at how the last fight wrapped up here. It's pretty much yeah. just... Yeah, they pretty much just recognize that they can hard press this advantage that they already have of people being staggered and on the back foot. This a self stagger now. really ends up really brutal. Yeah, and now they're oh, fighting like a 5v3 for fun. Yeah. With the so, soldier to go with. I hope that, you know, throughout the duration of the session, it's been kind of clear that the reason that Defiant won this over Timeless isn't just, you know, pure individual mechanics difference or, you know, uh just oh yeah they're just the the goats you know but it's rather because they had a better handle on how they could set up to control the map yeah it's, it's a macro gap and then yeah. from that map control you would have red teams players you would have timeless as players disabled and contained more which in turn enabled key players like merit to make bigger plays and have that even cleaner mech uh mechanical execution. Mm -hmm. Now, are there any um, last questions before we wrap this up? And I hope this has been uh, something of interest for you guys. I don't usually do, um, you know, Overwatch University lot review yeah. or anything. So most people probably are less familiar with my work. And of course, our lad Voiceborn here is the GOAT. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's been, you know, educational and interesting. <sighs> oh, well, we, we didn't do intro. Yeah, we didn't do <laughs> intro. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right in time. Hi, I'm Anima. I ended up as a mod in the server somehow. Um, nepotism. I am an, <laughs> you're real nepotism. I'm an open division coach or well, what was open division or tier three, which is essentially, you know, GM1 right underneath contenders and uh than contenders being under owl um i have gotten a top third so as a coach i've gotten a top 35 finish 32 finish and 25 finish as my uh, best three finishes which puts me in you know upper middle open division